Uh, hey guys, in this video, I will try to provide you an intuitive understanding of power system inertia, which may help in answering some important questions related to inertia. As a quick introduction, let me tell you that in this scene from Amazing Spider-Man 2, when the electro is charging him himself without informing the grid operator, the system is still stable because of inertia. Now you might ask that in the following scene, when he takes too much power, the system collapse. Where is your inertia now? Well, what can I say? It is inertia, not Spider-Man, uh, so it can't handle a supervillain. Okay, let's start the topic. The power balance equation for synchronous generator is given by mechanical power is equals to rotational power, that is stored inertia, plus electrical power. Input power comes from turbine which rotates the rotor. It can come from steam, water, or gas, etc. This power is used to generate electrical power. However, the amount of input mechanical power must be greater than the electrical load because some amount of power is consumed by rotor to maintain the rated frequency 50 Hz in Indian system. This additional energy required for maintaining the frequency of system is called rotational energy or inertia. Before proceeding further, let us understand the nature of load because this is the most important thing or key concept in understanding the power system inertia. There are three types of loads, constant power, constant impedance and constant current loads. We deal with only constant power types of load. This type of load consumes the rated amount of power not less and not more from its rating. It means that if there is less amount of power available at the load point, it will start sucking more power from system to fulfill its requirement and if there is more power available in the system, then it will not consume it. Let's see how this concept simplifies the whole puzzle. Now consider a load of rating 100 megawatt and let's say that the rotor requires additional 50 megawatt of uh, power to maintain the frequency at 50 hertz. To keep it simple, we can say 1 megawatt is required to increase the frequency by 1 hertz. Remember, this is simplified just to provide an intuitive understanding of the concept and, party, and practically rotor does not consume this much of power and the droop characteristics are used to represent this relationship between frequency and power. Now consider case 1 when uh, suddenly the power demand increases by 2 megawatt. Now load being the constant power load will try to suck the extra power from the grid to fulfill the additional requirement of 2 megawatt. Usually the increase in demand is just uh, satisfied by increasing the mechanical input power. However, increasing the mechanical input power is a time taking process and cannot be done instantaneously. Uh, for that, Initially, we increase boiler temperature, this increases steam pressure, which increases turbine speed and eventually input rotor mechanical power increases. During this whole process, if power is not balanced, then it might collapse the system. Why it collapses is not important for now. It is clear that the load and generation both are rigid. Load is asking for 102 megawatt and input power cannot increase beyond 150 megawatt. This will create a power imbalance. Now only flexible entity is rotor with stored energy of 50 megawatt or inertia which can be increased or decreased if we are willing to compromise with frequency. So here the additional 2 megawatt will be released by rotor and now the rotor have 48 megawatt of energy left and by the relationship of 1 megawatt per hertz we know that it will run at a frequency of 48 hertz. A simple bicycle analogy can be used to understand it better. Consider input mechanical power in generator analogous to the input paddling power. Rotational speed or rated frequency is analogous to the speed of bicycle which we want to maintain and the constant power load is analogous to constant forces opposing the motion of cycle. For example, friction between mechanical parts of cycle, friction to ground and gravity. Initially, when we are on a plane, a plane surface and the friction forces are opposing the motion and assume we are maintaining a constant speed. This is like the scenario when the mechanical input is satisfying the electrical load and also maintaining the rated frequency. Let's say we reached a hill. Now, the constant force acting against motion will increase due to the addition of gravity component. And if we continue with the same amount of paddling force, then we cannot maintain the desired speed. The speed will decrease similar to the decrease in frequency in generator when the electrical load increased and the input mechanical power couldn't be increased instantaneously. 
to obtain the desired speed it must increase the input paddling power similarly to maintain the desired frequency the input mechanical power must be increased in generator similarly consider case 2 where the load demand decreases by 2 megawatt again the constant power load being a rigid entity will only consume 98 megawatt and the system is left with extra 2 megawatt power the generator is also rigid and cannot change its mechanical input instantaneously so the extra power is consumed by the rotor and the frequency of system becomes 52 hertz this case is analogous to a bicycle going downhill and the speed increases if the input paddling power is not decreased here the frequency is shown for all the three cases the frequency for case one is less compared to the rated frequency and in case two it is high in conclusion I would say that in both the cases the system is stable because of the inertia because the rotor is compensating for the increase and decrease in electrical demand uh, that's all from my side if you have any question or queries you can ask in the comment sections thank you